So this first case is actually one of the first cases of COVID-19 that was seen in the United States. So this dates from somewhere around February 2019. It was in the first week that any such cases had even been identified in the U.S. So this is probably one of the first CTs uh, ever done of a COVID patient in the U.S. And there are very ill-defined foci of consolidation or density in both the left upper and right middle or lower lobes. Right, and here is the CT. So the reason we have this is I want to demonstrate the actual findings, right? This is a mixture of ground glass density and crazy paving. And those were the two classic CT findings that were initially described with COVID. When it gets worse, it will range into frank consolidation and uh, get pretty nonspecific in its appearance. But early on, this is a great way to catch it. It will typically be bilateral, rounded, and peripheral, and demonstrate a combination of ground glass and crazy paving. So ground glass is defined as parenchymal density, lung density, that still allows you to identify underlying structure, right? So if you look towards the anterior portion of this parenchymal density, you can see vessels still running through that area of alveolar density. And that is the very definition of ground glass. Now, crazy paving is intralobular septal thickening. And so you'll see a linear pattern within it, kind of in the center, to the patient's left of that area of density, that's a little tiny patch of crazy paving. And so we'll see more of that. It's funny, but uh, I fought this whole battle over our natural language processing resources. We had a bunch of ancillary facilities that wanted us to cull our various reports for evidence of ground glass density and crazy paving. And we were going to flag potential COVID cases with that. And I fought that tooth and nail because it really was pretty stupid. These are very, very non-specific findings. And this combination could be seen in a whole lot more than COVID, right? So these are not specific findings. And that's really true with a lot of findings. I trained with the son of a famous radiologist uh, by the name of Zylak. And Carl Zylak was a famous radiologist of the last generation. In fact, that whole concept of dividing the mediastinum into its various portions, you know, superior, anterior, middle, posterior, and using that to direct your differential diagnosis, that's actually known as the Zylac method. And so Carl Zylac came and lectured to us one day and he said, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the lung is a stupid organ that only has a few ways to respond to any injury. So. You can burn it, you can freeze it, you can infect it, you can infarct it, you can beat it with a stick. It all ends up looking a lot the same. So uh, that's kind of the case with pulmonary findings. Uh, the joke was that his son, my friend, said, well, Dad, maybe it's just that you don't understand it as well. Uh, <laughs> so I side on the Carl Zilek side of things. So here's the other focus. You can see, again, ground glass density right? A density within the alveoli that still allows you to detect the detail of the underlying lung structures. And a little better example of crazy paving, where you can see some linear stuff that's starting to form squares, rectangles, right? And that's the intralobular septal thickening. Okay, again, nonspecific, but a good pattern for COVID. It's bilateral, rounded, and peripheral in location. See how it goes out to the pleural edge there in both cases. Right? And there are a bunch of other patches of ground glass density elsewhere in the lungs. All right. So that's one of the first cases of COVID to hit the country. That actually came from the Bay Area. All right. Our next one. This is also a COVID patient, but a little more extreme. And so... Thought, I thought I had magged that. I didn't. Sorry. So there is a small focus of what I would call frank consolidation in the center of the blue circle there. 
So that's a little area that has progressed and is even more dense. You can't see any lung detail there, right? So that is frank consolidation. Around it is an area of ground glass opacity, also in the right lung that you see here. That's ground glass. Okay, and now here is about the most extreme example of crazy paving that I could find. And so it's a really, you see how it starts to look, it looks almost like chain mail, right? With little squarish circles all connected together there. That again is intralobular septal thickening. And if you look up the differentials on both ground glass and crazy paving, you'll get pages and pages of stuff that could potentially do this. But certainly COVID is something that should come to mind in this day and age. Right, and there is that frank consolidation within an area of ground glass. Right, one of my old attendings used to say ground glass was like uh, looking at someone in the shower through that frosted glass. You can tell there's someone in there, but you can't see the detail. Uh, that's kind of what it's like, right? You can see the vessels and other structures running through, but it's a, it's a little fuzzy, obviously, because of the uh, parenchymal density. All right, so that's another case of COVID-19. So this is extreme ground glass. It's everywhere. And do beware in radiology when you have a finding that involves all of a visualized structure, sometimes it can be a real fooler. And this is one of those, right? There's uh, ground glass density through all of the visualized lungs. And so that could actually fool you into just thinking it's normal if you didn't look closely enough. The one thing that would save you here is that there are these cystic regions, and that is those pneumatoceles are a classic finding in pneumocystis for any pneumonia. Don't say PCP pneumonia, because then you're saying pneumocystis carini pneumonia pneumonia. So PC pneumonia or PCP. So that is the classic ground glass of PCP pneumatoceles formation. You notice how that is sparing the fissures as this goes through. See, you can see a, a widened black line on the fissures there, right? So this one is not all the way to the periphery and is sparing the subpleural and subfissural regions, right? So that is PCP. All right, next one is another ground glass opacity. So you can see again that density. There might be a little intralobular septal thickening there, but not dramatic. But you can still see there is parenchymal density there, but you still can discern the underlying vessels and other structures. But this one is central in its location. It's not peripheral, and it's extreme in the subpleural and visceral sparing. You can really see it is not going out to that pleural surface or to any of the fissures. And the thing that is a very helpful finding right there. But the thing that really seals this for me is this is an example of interlobular septal thickening. You see in the central portion there, it almost looks like a bunch of uh, linked hexagons. And they're a little larger than you would uh, expect for it to be crazy paving. Right, and so this is congestive heart failure. It's central in the lobes with the ground glass density, and it's accompanied by interlobular septal thickening, which is pretty specific for volume overload or CHF. Another old trick one of my attendings gave me was sometimes when you get stuff that is so dense you can't tell what's going on, Look to the edge of the involved region. And we'll use that a few times in this lecture. It's very, very helpful. Not particularly in this case, right? It's ground glass density. But if you look to the edge of any involved region, you're going to get a much better sense of exactly how to characterize what you're looking at. <clears throat> All right, so central location associated with interlobular septal thickening, that's congestive heart failure. All right, a little less common. This one is what they call reverse pulmonary edema. Okay, so it's the exact opposite of what we were just looking at. It's peripheral 
and it spares the central portions of the various lung lobes. So this is unfortunately one that's also nonspecific. You look up reverse pulmonary edema and you'll get a whole big list. But the classic is eosinophilic pneumonia that causes this peripheral uh, ground glass density or even consolidation. Right, and there you can really see the central portions of the lobes are spared. This is pretty extreme. Usually these cases, in my experience, have been uh, even more pronounced peripherally. Uh, and uh, the distinction between, you know, the, uh, the reverse pulmonary edema and the spared regions is usually greater. So this is pretty extensive, uh, but a very nice example. And this actually is the kind of thing that typically goes to biopsy or at least uh, BAL for diagnosis, and that was the case here. So chronic eosinophilic pneumonia, there's an acute form as well that will look a little fluffier, a uh, little denser consolidation, and again, often uh, more strikingly peripheral. All right, our next one. This is a case of clear and obvious lung destruction. I actually showed this on my board review Jeopardy game just last week. And everybody, of course, was guessing necrotizing pneumonia, pulmonary abscess, et cetera. And those are all appropriate guesses on this. So let's look at that. And you can see it's just a big destructive, multi-cystic focus. Probably a dilated bronchus running in there as well. Right, but the real telling finding right there, you can see a little bronchial dilation. But the real telling finding here is the arterial supply to that right lower lobe. So you can see there is actually a vessel originating from the aorta and clearly running out into that affected region. So when you see a systemic blood supply that is the hallmark of a pulmonary sequestration, right? It is not receiving its blood flow from a branch of the pulmonary artery, right? So that is actually probably an extra pleural sequestration as well. And those have a tendency to get infected. And so what you're looking at there is an infected sequestration. Tune your eye to the presence of a fluid level in all situations, right? You can see very nice fluid level within that region on the lung windows. And that should tell you any time that you see a cystic entity with a fluid level in it, suspect a super infection. So your eye should really go right to that. These nice flat uh, gravity dependent lines are not a normal finding in most physiologic states. All right, our next one. So you can see this is Airspace density, that right lower lobe is clearly involved with ground glass density, maybe progressing even to consolidation in certain areas. But there is a cystic region of pulmonary destruction there, centrally within it, right near the hilum there. And you can see that nicer on the video. Right after the pause, right there. All right, so a focus of destruction, certainly it could be a just a necrotizing pneumonia or pulmonary abscess, but there is this focus of contrast enhancement, nice, well-circumscribed, rounded focus of contrast enhancement. And this will happen in these destructive pneumonias where you develop a, you know, it essentially eats into the pulmonary artery and you develop a pseudoaneurysm there. If you watch that, it doesn't lead anywhere, right? And it's sitting right in the middle of that focus of lung destruction. Okay, this is much better seen on the coronal. You can see there's a little neck extending to the pulmonary arterial branch that's supplying this pseudoaneurysm right there. Right, so that is a destructive pneumonia with pseudoaneurysm formation. All right, our next one, another aneurysm but this one is specific to tuberculosis infection. So this one is more central and it's arising from the right pulmonary artery there. There's a little neck 
where they communicate, and it's very subtle. Note that there are little peripheral calcifications around the outside of this collection of contrast. And that should tell you everywhere, every time you see it, anywhere in the body, that I'm looking at a vascular lesion, right? Probably arterial and probably an aneurysm. And that, of course, is the case here. But that is very helpful. When you see those little peripheral calcifications, uh, start thinking vascular lesion. And obviously, there's very dense contrast enhancement. I've seen these called lymph nodes. I've seen them called Castleman's disease for brightly enhancing lymph nodes. Uh, be very careful about calling those sorts of things. I would say this uh, phenomenon is actually the more frequent, the more common. This one was made a little easier because there is a dense calcification here, typical of a Rathke complex, right? And there are Heiler calcifications as well. So previous exposure to tuberculosis plus this finding, this uh, peripherally calcified collection of contrast, that spells Rasmussen aneurysm, which is specifically a pulmonary artery aneurysm arising from tuberculosis infection.